Hey, I'm Sarah. This is Abby, and welcome to A Swool Unlimited. If you're new here, I'm a scuba instructor, and I moved into my van in 2021 after losing my dive shop in Indonesia due to shutdowns. I've been on the road diving around the U.S., Canada, and Mexico for the last two years, teaching on YouTube along the way. Hello, and welcome to my very hot and buggy van here in La Paz, Mexico. Check it out. There are so many flies here. Okay, I'm starting my trip north. I'm heading to San Diego. And if you're in the area, Jay Gardner and I from the Dive Table podcast are gonna do a meet and dive on April 7th. If you're in the area, I'd love to meet you. So send me an email or a direct message on Instagram and I'll give you the details. Other announcements, you can come diving with me on one of my expeditions. I'm heading to Komodo in June, which is going to be so amazing. It's my first time back to Komodo since I had to leave the area. Can't wait to share that with you all. I also have my Baja dive expedition open for, oh look, there's Abby. I also have my Baja dive expedition open in December and then Socorro in 2025. See all the details for those trips on my website. Let's get into the video. In my last video, I shared my experience with stress and fear of going through my cave refresher course after being away from caves for several years. I've received a number of impactful comments and messages about other people's experience with fear and scuba. So I'd like to use this video to share how I work with and move through anxiety. We'll be doing this while watching fun diving footage from a couple of cave dives in the Dos Palmas Cenote in Mexico. These tips can be applied to any kind of diving or situation in which you are feeling anxious. Obviously, there are many tools for this, so if you have tips that I don't mention, please leave them in the comments so we can all learn from each other. This dive day presented a new experience for me, and a new stressor. Diving with a stranger in a cave. I remember the right, the line is over this way. Over there. Oh uh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Yep. I was fresh out of my cave refresher and still working on my comfort of being in caves in general. Add in diving with a total stranger and I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. As we drove to the cenote, we went through the standard get to know you questions and I started to feel better about the situation. I knew he was a solid diver because my friends at Darkside Divers connected us for this dive day and I trust their judgment. As we spoke, it was clear he was experienced as a diver and in the caves specifically. Also, he was kind and supportive to hear about my complicated feelings on cave diving. Those are all green flags in my book. Despite what my content looks like, I actually have a long history with anxiety. I did not always have good tools to deal with my big feelings, and it has become one of my missions as a scuba instructor to help others with whatever fears come up with scuba diving. I push myself to talk openly about the challenges I've experienced in this realm because I find that scuba divers are nervous about airing their mistakes, near misses, and accidents. There's a lot of judgment and shame, which keeps stories locked away, ultimately doing a disservice to the community because we don't get to learn from them. For example, this cave diving day, we did two dives that day. The first dive, we encountered a restriction I didn't feel good about, so we changed our plan and went somewhere else. I could have forced it and gotten into something I was uncomfortable with, but instead I used that dive to gain confidence and when we went for the second dive, I was able to go through the restrictions with ease of mind. Anxiety springs from living in the future and stressing about things that could happen. In my experience with cave diving, I have these vivid visions of being trapped or lost in a cave. Worry and fear are normal, and typically good things because their primary purpose is to keep you alive. However, allowing the worry to control your life would mean you don't go out and do things that light you up. The mind cycle of worrying can only be broken with continuous training and effort. 
The main distinction that every diver needs to determine for themselves is the difference between manageable nerves and high levels of anxiety that could lead to an accident. Each individual has to spend time within their minds to understand this difference because there's no way for me as an instructor to quantify that for you. The test that I use is, am I able to regulate my emotions and think clearly? For me, this doesn't mean that I have to be able to reach a zen state for the entirety of a dive, but am I able to check in with myself when I'm feeling anxious, take some deep breaths, and bring myself back into my skin? Another important piece of information to understand about myself is how do I deal when things really hit the fan? The ability to stay level-headed and respond when my clients or buddies are in danger is a combination of good training and experience as well as instinctual crisis management. I say this because I have seen good, strong divers completely freeze when faced with a scary situation, and it's not a simple response to train away. This is one of those things in diving that divers won't know until it happens, so I recommend learning and practicing safety skills in order to give yourself the best upper hand in a situation. I started building tools to manage my anxiety through a consistent yoga practice, and actually getting sober expanded those tools and my ability to regulate emotions. Here are the tools that I use. Preparation. If you feel like you are not sufficiently trained for the type of diving you're about to do, call in the professionals. Get with an instructor and work through skills or scenarios that cause you discomfort. Team. Nerves can be lessened by diving with people you know and trust. However, I recommend staying away from trust me dives. Quote unquote, trust me dives are when you relinquish responsibility for the dive in some way. It's a common thing less experienced divers do with their experienced buddies, and especially with dive masters who are being paid to lead a dive. Even if you're going on a guided dive, you need to understand the plan, ask questions, do your dive checks, and be a good buddy. Food and drink. Don't drink alcohol the night before a dive, and if possible, skip the coffee in the morning as well. Now, if you're like me and you need that morning cup of coffee, just try to limit it so that you don't feel the jitters. It may also help to eat or not eat before a dive, depending on your body's needs. Visualization. I take myself on the dive before I even get into my suit. I may not know exactly what I'm going to encounter on the dive, but I can go through the dive prep and make a guess on what things are gonna look like. If possible, I like to do this while stretching or simply taking some nice deep breaths. Breathing. One thing I'm always doing on dives is extending the length of my exhalation in order to engage the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, volume-wise, this doesn't mean that you exhale more than you inhale. You need to keep the inhales and exhales to more or less the same amount of air, but focus on changing the speed of releasing that air. Focus point. I find that if I slow down my eye movement, I'm able to relax more. Find an area of the reef or cave and notice every little detail about it. This brings you right into mindfulness of the present moment, and it's impossible to be anxious when you are fully in the moment. Contact. This one might be a little weird, but I've found it to be soothing, so why not share it? The idea came from the fact that it always feels grounding to hold someone's hand, so I started using gentle touch to calm myself. I take my right index and thumb and softly pinch the skin between my left index and thumb. The pressure gives me something physical to pay attention to, and it keeps me in my body instead of floating away with whatever is going on around me. When it's possible on dives, track your sac rate you could have that information readily available with transmitters and computers, or you may need to calculate it from a steady portion of the dive. Track your sac rate when you feel comfortable versus what it is when you're stressed out. Please don't get obsessive about this, but it's helpful information, especially for dive planning and thinking about contingencies. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> How can you tell that you're diving with an ocean lover? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> in my situation here in the caves, this last dive was when I really noticed my sac rate began to relax back to normal. So sometimes it just takes some patience. There's no need to berate yourself for being nervous, especially if it came from some kind of bad experience while diving. The important thing is to talk about it with your buddies and move through it so that you can get back to enjoying yourself in the water. That's it. That's the video. I hope this is helpful. And again, if you have other tools for dealing with nerves, please share them in the comments. We all have different experiences with nerves and anxiety, so the more tools, the better. Remember, you can get more from the Asul Unlimited community by joining Patreon or signing up for one of my expeditions. Okay, love you, bye.